Happy Saturday and welcome back everyone, Mackenzie Lambert here, your host for Mac and the Movies. On this installment, we continue our series on select films of the Criterion Collection. Last week, we looked at the French psychological thriller, Diabolique. This week, we take a trip through the seedy underbelly of Boston. It's Friends of Eddie Coyle, directed by Peter Yates and starring Robert Mitchum. Fingers Coyle is an arms runner that is looking at a prison stretch for a truck hijacking. Coyle goes to an ATF agent, Dave Foley, for help. Coyle must become an informant in order to reduce or avoid the sentence. Unfortunately, Foley himself is an informant for Dylan, bar owner and member of organized crime in Boston. Meanwhile, the guns Eddie are running are used for a string of bank robberies perpetrated by Scalise and Artie. They take the bank manager hostage in their home. Three robbers arrive at the bank with the manager, while another stays at the manager's home with their loved ones to make sure the robbery goes off without any problems. Out of desperation, Coyle finds himself having to give up his associates to save himself. But does he truly know the price he'll be paying to secure his own freedom? In comparison to his contemporaries and films that would follow in subsequent decades, Friends of Eddie Coyle doesn't seem to get the same degree of recognition. You have films like Mean Streets, Reservoir Dogs, and The Departed, hail as all-time classics, yet owe themselves to this crime drama. From the dialogue to the relationships woven between characters, it's a film that does a lot while seemingly to do very little. The role of Eddie Coyle seems custom-tailored for Mitchum. He has a worldly but weary look in his eyes and face. His monologue about his extra set of knuckles shows that pain is part of his profession and part of life. Count your fucking knuckles. All of them? Count as many as you want. As many as you got, I got four more. You know how I got those? I bought some stuff from a man I knew his name. The stuff was traced. The guy I bought it for, he said MCI Walpole for 15 to 25, still in there. But he had some friends. I got an extra set of knuckles. They put your hand in the drawer. And somebody kicks the drawer shut. Hurt like a bastard. Jesus. What makes it hurt worse? What makes it hurt more is knowing what's going to happen to you, you know? There you are. They just come up to you and say, look, you made somebody mad. You made a big mistake, and now there's somebody doing time for it. There's nothing personal in it, you understand, but it just has to be done. Now get your hand out there. You think about not doing it, you know? When I was a kid in Sunday school, this nun, she used to say, stick your hand out. I stick my hand out, whap, she knocked me across the knuckles with a steel edge ruler. So one day I says, when she told me, stick your hand out, I says, no. She whapped me right across the face with the ruler, same thing. They put your hand in a drawer, and somebody kicks the drawer shut. You ever hear bones breaking? Just like a man snapping a shingle, hurts like a bastard. I don't know who you've been selling to. The man tells me you got guns to sell. I need guns. Oh, look, you can't trace these guns. I guarantee that. You better. Neither one of us will be able to shake hands. He was 56 when he took the role of Coyle, and he brings a seasoned feel to the world view of this character. In addition to Mitchum, you have a great band of supporting characters played by a who's who of character actors. Richard Jordan, Peter Boyle. Alex Rocco, Stephen Keats, and Joe Santos bring the right degree of grit and intrigue to the world presented in the film. Keep an eye out for James Tolkien, best known as Principal Strickland from Back to the Future, as a liaison to the local crime boss. The music score by Dave Grusin is a quirky funk score with tense moments. <laughs> My knowledge of David Grusin as a composer is limited to his work for the film The Goonies, but I definitely intend to check out his other work after this film. The sound editing was also smart to know when not to use music. 
During the bank robbery sequences, the music use is reserved for near the end of the heists. It's a nice bit of misdirection. As an audience, we're tuned to believe music will indicate something about to go wrong, but things can go smoothly. Then when the music plays and things go south during the robbery, we're less likely to expect it. With a film like Bullet, starring Steve McQueen to his name, one would expect a car chase or two. But the action is minimal, which adds a layer of realism to the proceedings, and it works like a charm. Overall, Friends of Eddie Coyle is a crime drama that is well worth your time. It may not be as flashy as its genre brethren, but great performances from great actors will keep you invested. And that finishes this look at Friends of Eddie Coyle. Thanks for watching. What's your favorite crime drama? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. For next time in the Criterion Collection series, it's a big one. THE big one. The Japanese kaiju classic, Gojira. If you want to stay on top of future content, go ahead and click the subscribe button as well as the bell icon. Until next time, this is Mackenzie Lambert with Mac and the Movies. Take care, folks.